In this video, we're solving an energy conservation problem where a compressed spring shoots a block vertically up into the air, and the goal is to find the maximum height of that block. So in our initial state, we have this spring compressed by 25 centimeters compared to its equilibrium length. It has a constant of 60 newtons per meter, and the block on top of it has a mass of 0.5 kilograms. We release the system from rest, the block gets shot up into the air and reaches some maximum height before turning around, and we call that H max. So because we're asked to measure the maximum height of this block relative to the equilibrium length of the spring, that's where the dotted line is, we'll go ahead and use that as our origin of coordinates for the y direction. So I'm going to call that y equals zero. And one of the tricky things about this is it means our initial height is actually negative, and we have to take that into consideration to talk about the gravitational potential energy in that initial state. So we're going to call that initial height y initial, and that's negative 0.25 meters, just converting to the SI base units there. Finally, we reach this maximum height, which just for notational consistency, I'm going to call y final for the moment, and then we'll replace that with h max at the end of the problem. So we're using energy conservation to solve this problem, and we're going to start at the very beginning here. I'm going to say E initial is equal to E final. And then we have to ask, what are all the different types of energy happening in the initial state and the final state, and write down all those terms. So in the initial state, clearly I have energy stored in this compressed spring. So I'm going to write 1 half K times the compression distance squared. So we could write that as Y initial squared. Note that y initial has a minus sign in it, but we're squaring that, so it's not going to cause a problem here. I get a positive spring energy. Okay, we add to that the negative potential energy in this initial state. So that's mg times the y coordinate, which happens to be negative. So I did write plus there, but y initial is negative. So there's our negative initial potential energy, because we're below the origin. Now in the final state, the spring is relaxed. It released all of its spring potential energy. As the process was unfolding, the block was moving rather fast on the way up, but we don't have to worry about that intermediate phase because all the kinetic energy is eventually converted into potential energy at the maximum height. So our final energy has only this gravitational potential energy term, and that's going to be mg times y final. So that's what it looks like in general, and then we can sub in everything we know about the problem, and k was 60 newtons per meter. And y initial was negative 0.25, but I know the minus sign cancels, so I have 0.25 squared plus the mass of our block, 0.5 kilograms, times our approximate value for g, 9.8, and y initial, which was negative 0.25, giving us a negative potential energy term in the initial state. There's our mass again, 0.5, there's g again, and then y final, we'll go ahead and replace it now with h max. So we can do this all at once in our calculator, just simplifying all the terms on the left-hand side and then dividing by this coefficient of h max, and we've got our solution right away. And when we run the numbers on this and round to three significant digits, we get 0.133 meters for the maximum height, and it would be a little more natural to express this in centimeters as 13.3 centimeters. And we're done. If you enjoyed this video or at least found it useful, Check out another one by clicking one of the links on the left, or click the Zach's Lab logo on the right to explore dozens of physics and math playlists. As always, you can leave your questions, comments, and requests in the comments section below, and I'll get back to you within 24 hours. Thanks for watching Zach's Lab, and best of luck on your math and physics journey.